Hi, I'm Sarah Jane Guild. I'm a scientific consultant with AD Instruments. Today I'm going to run you through the main features of the SmartPad, which is part of the Kaha Sciences Rack Telemetry System. The SmartPad is a wireless signal receiver for the signals from the telemeter, and it's also a wireless power provider, and it charges the backup battery for the Rack Telemeter while it's inside the animal. So on the front here, you'll see a LED indicator light. This shows you whether the smart pad is communicating with a telemeter set to the same communication channel. There are 40 different communication channels to choose from. Green says it's communicating. Orange says it's not currently communicating with the telemeter on that channel. And red tells you there's a problem. We have the smart pad has an indentation on the top, which is where the rat cage will sit and the animal can move around freely within that cage. So at the back of the smart pad, we have three BNC connectors, which output the analog physiological signals and they can be connected to the AD Instruments Power Lab. The smart pad automatically detects which model of telemeter it's communicating with and will output the appropriate physiological signal, which is calibrated out the back through those BNCs. And we also have, of course, the power cable, which runs to the power pack to power the smart pad. There's also a fan which pulls air through the inlet and pushes out the outlet, and that keeps all the electronics inside of the smart pad cool throughout your experiment. If you're wanting to charge a telemeter while it's not implanted in an animal, we have a rectangle area here and that's the optimal position for placing your telemeter if it's not inside an animal for charging that backup battery. So the smart pad provides the inductive wireless power field to charge the telemeter battery. That wireless power field is produced both above and below the smart pad that sits under the rat cage. And the telemeter will pick up that wireless power field and it will turn it into current to charge its battery. That operates through the bottom of the cage, but it also happens, the field occurs below the smart pad as well. So it's important that the smart pad is not placed on a metal surface. Something like wood or plastic shelving is ideal. And the smart pad field will effectively charge the telemeter battery up to five or six centimeters above the surface of the smart pad but it will extend for approximately 10 centimetres below that. In terms of spacing, we recommend keeping all metal at least 10 centimetres away from the smart pad. So any smart pads, neighbouring smart pads, should be 10 centimetres away side by side. But we also recommend a 40 centimetre spacing between your smart pad shelving, and that allows for some extra spacing for the cage, the metal cage lid on the top of your smart pad from the cage below so that that doesn't interfere with the, um, the smart pad above. The normal wire rack cage lid of a rack cage and the bottle nib, they're fine on the smart pad itself. You just want to keep them away from the smart pad above. So the wireless power field of the smart pad will activate any telemeter that is placed within that field. So when I place a telemeter, even if it's in its sterile packaging, it will activate that telemeter and turn it on. And you should see the light at the front of the smart pad changing from orange to green if both the smart pad and the telemeter are set to the same communication channel. So the smart pad is designed to communicate and charge a rat telemeter, but we can put the smart pad into what we call co-housing mode. And in co-housing mode, we can actually use a second rat telemeter and the smart pad will optimize the wireless power requirements of both of those telemeters. That enables you to either have two rats, implant, each implanted with a telemeter in the same cage so that you can do behavioral studies or for animal ethics reasons, you might want to co-house your, your animals but it also enables you to combine two telemeters in one rat. So for one telemeter, we recommend a rat of around 175 grams or larger. For two telemeters, we recommend a larger rat at 350 grams or larger. But you can combine 
two telemeters and get up to four physiological signals. You can put a 56 SP to record sympathetic nerve activity and blood pressure, for example. And here we've got a 54 PB, which records pressure, which you could put in the left ventricle, for example, to record left ventricular pressure. And you might want to record ECG at the same time. This smart pad will record the signals from one of those telemeters and it will optimize and average the power needs of both telemeters. You then have a second smart pad, which we call the secondary smart pad, and that will simply record the signals from the second telemeter, but because of the five meter data transmission range, that smart pad can be up to five meters away and just stacked nicely on another shelf. One troubleshooting tip with the smart pad is that every two hours, the smart pad automatically disables the wireless power field for 30 minutes. And that's to allow the equilibration of the telemeter internal temperature to the rat body temperature to update the temperature output from the back of the smart pad. That happens automatically, but where we run into trouble is if you try and activate a telemeter on the smart pad during that time while the wireless power field is off, it won't work because it won't turn the telemeter on. So if you are having trouble getting your telemeter to turn on using the smart pad and the light won't change from orange to green, then have a look. If the indicator light on the front of your smart pad is slow flashing orange, that indicates that its charging field is turned off. The first thing to try is to unplug the power from the smart pad and then turn it back on and that will reset that two hour timer. If that doesn't work, then use ConfigSoft to double check that the smart pad charging field has been enabled. <laughs>